lot. The parking lot. Uh, be hard to get Are we up there, folks? <laughs> <coughs> all right, anyway. We all know John Bush, right? Yeah, he's been on the streets, getting arrested down there, protesting and everything. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, we got to play that bill. That guy's yeah. on my computer. Still awaiting trial. David Thomas, friend of mine for a couple of years now. Yep. And finally got him to come down, so we'll have to be kind of gentle with him. <laughs> we didn't put him in the middle, you see. <laughs> but maybe next time. Uh, we were just going to kind of ramble on here. Uh, the, the election's just over. I have uh, contacted Randy Shade and, and Kathy Tobo. Is that how you pronounce it? That's it. To see if they come on on the 13th, was it? On the 13th, so we'll see. I don't have another sh show till June 6th, and I'm trying to put the music shoe together. I got everybody but the lawyer. <laughs> Intellectual property rights. Cool. And I've been in contact with some, so we'll see. Wow. But anyway, so the city election is over, and all except for Kathy, we were keep and we still might be keeping our incumbents. Yeah, I, I doubt see my it. bicycle friend one handily. The bicycle man. Yep. Those uh, Morrison and Riley are, are they, they were shoe ins anyway. Yeah, they were? Sure. Yeah, and they, I think Riley won with 64% or something. and uh, Morrison, Morrison had 70% or so. Yeah. yeah, I didn't, neither one of them really mustered too much competition. And I think Morrison has dedicated herself to the people, at least. I may not agree with all of her policies and think that some of them are too intrusive, but I think to her defense, at least she's standing with the community as opposed to the incumbent that's on the hot seat, Randy Shade who seems just for every single vote she makes, she stands with the status quo, which is helping out big business and, and selling out the little guy. We, we do not disagree at all. All right, and Austin, 60% of Austin uh, agreed. Uh, if you look at it, she was beat, you know, 67% of the people, the registered voters, voted for not shady. So right. you can tell that that not was kind shady. of sending the message. Not, yeah. Shady the clown, yeah. Come on, she came on a show and Tova wouldn't. Yeah, that was that was interesting. Yeah, That's it might have just been. Uh, it's tough to schedule, I know. Yeah, they're, they're busy for sure. Here. You got to give it you to him. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> saw it? <laughs> I haven't yeah. seen one yet. <laughs> they're out there. <laughs> Shady. Well, the I know y'all are both into into city stuff a lot. So I keep you informed. If I can get them on here, maybe we'll come down and have an improv two type of. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I thought night, Randy right? Shade sounded pretty good to me. And I'll pass it on to. Because I'm always pro business campaign. anyway. <laughs> you pro pass free it on market, to him, you know. I will. Yeah. Well, wasn't that free market? I mean, what, what was so bad about it? What did she do? Well, she has a tendency to side with a certain group over others, and I think it's just a problem with the nature and gover nature of government in general. But for example, with the taxi cab issue, we oh, that's about. right. You you were here to grill yeah. pretty good, and uh... yeah, she sides with the big taxi cab lobbyists who want to protect their little piece of the pie, who don't want to open it up to this guy Chris Nielsen, who had an right. innovative electric car company. It was green, and because these guys who did donate. Money Money to her campaign, three hundred fifty dollars the maximum. Well, uh, this know. is what I assume because you know they want to keep competition out. They just go to the politician who has the power through government to keep someone out because there's all these petty regulations. You got to ask permission to do business in the city, and she always sides with the big guy, not the little guy. That's why I, I think she's know. a right wing lefty who sides with the big guy. She doesn't side with the little guy like Morrison, and hopefully Tova will do. Well, I do know that some competition would uh, lower the price on this taxis. Sure. That would help. Competition that would help. always benefits. Taxis are high enough, dollar. And there aren't enough taxis. And, you know, I mean, you, even when you put the uh, pedicabs together, you know, mm -hmm. Chris's, I, I've seen his cabs and mm -hmm. I've talked to him. Mm -hmm. I think they're cool. Little, that's oh, you cool know about thing. this issue, too? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I guess I've really been in the dark. I, I mean, I've I talked there. to him and, and heard him, you know, rant kind of about his, uh, about the kind of, how he doesn't get really hurt at uh, city council, and they're mm -hmm. not giving him a chance. And uh, uh, well, it and sounded to me kind of like he was asking for something special. Could he get him uh, a regular taxi uh, license? And it was. It wasn't in the code. There's uh, pedicabs are covered, but electric vehicles are not right. covered. So by the very absence of some sort of licensing, where he comes and asks permission to do business. He can't do business, and they were taking him to jail, or they were taking his people to uh, court 
they kept on uh, they kept on winning their cases, thankfully. But it basically came to a situation where he was not able to earn a dollar. He wasn't able to create jobs in a tough economy. Although Austin's not being hit as hard as other cities, uh, unless he got permission. And Randy Shade was denying him the permission to do business yeah. by keeping this ordinance from going through that would have legal. He could have bought regular gut cars and started his own taxi well, company. Yeah, though, but right? that's not the idea. This is it's it's electric and yeah, uh, it's you supposed know, to be a green for, city. And it's for short trips. Yeah, and he's short been doing trips. It, hasn't he been uh, yeah, using them for a couple years. years? Well, he's out of business Party. now. She oh, put him out of business that. because they delayed the vote for this ordinance. They yeah. insisted on doing yet another study. The city has That's a tendency right. of shelling out thousands of dollars to their buddies to do studies. Uh, and he ended up going out of business. His investor pulled out, and they took the electric vehicles because the city council wouldn't allow innovation. What kind of rates was he charging? Uh, it Compared was it was no? for, it was for donations. It wasn't a fee, so it was a donation. And another thing I is the see taxi. Me and Jesse getting drunk, getting one. Well, hey, get out of <laughs> Don't even. That helps with DWI too. <laughs> like like those. Uh, I forget what the name of the company is. That's uh, the long open buses, basically. Mm, you sit yeah. on bar stools and yeah. you can uh, uh, you can drink as you're. Well, we did talk about that some, didn't town. we? Yeah, about yeah. the police getting all this money for DWI. Well, why not get that money to subsidize some taxi companies, and that will solve your DWA? Yeah, that would make sense. They do something similar to that. Uh, it's called Austin Sober Ride. But I've mm -hmm. spoken with some of the heads of the taxi cab services, and they don't really appreciate it. They say that they get under cut because the money that's raised through a nonprofit isn't enough and then the actual taxi cab drivers don't like it because sometimes when you're catering to drunks you'll get puke in your vehicle and then they got to yeah. shell out 100 bucks yeah. to clean it and they're yeah, taken out of commission you don't really want to get those cars no 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 there is a square patrol there's this group called square patrol i think their website is squarepatrol.org and they have these little miniature scooters and you call them up and they drive out to your car and they take you and your drunk butt and your drunk car home. They pop the scooter in the car and they take you home. So now your car's not huh. left to get towed away or to get vandalized or broken too. into. Uh, I think that's the type of things that we need to look after. Not this no refusal, vampire cop, DWI checkpoint nonsense that they try every two years at the State House. Thankfully, we, we've had we beat pictures back. before of this the Batmobile. We even had a little oh, song God. about it down here one time. <laughs> it's a. Uh, you know, expensive. a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment. Yeah, it's a, it's a shiny Batmobile. toy. Yeah. Breath alcohol it's, testing oh. center. It's a big yeah. RV type of deal. Yeah, it's fancy. And they got, the police are really gotten to spend a lot of money. That's another thing why I'm opposed to uh, Randy Shade. She just bends over for the uh, police union and just votes for every single bit of technology, no matter how invasive or unconstitutional. Like it's no I'm good. Getting all these bitches in my head. <laughs> Never mind. Uh don't let yeah, my I, think, I think Tobo's the better, much better candidate, and and I don't see that. Shade, I think Shade within a couple of days is going to declare that she's not running. I mean, it, is that why they haven't contacted me back? Well, there's three days. You know uh, that she's got three days from the election, as I understand it, to say no, she she doesn't want to run off, and it's going to cost the city upwards of five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I saw four hundred thousand as the number, yeah. so she would save a lot of taxpayer money by just going ahead and conceding. And again, it wasn't really the 33 to 44 or 47, whatever it ended up being. It ended up being 67% yep. of the people voted against Randy Shade. Yeah, so. Did you see the, the, the map in the paper today? Uh-uh. Uh, was it in the paper? I might, I might have seen it online. Mm -hmm. Where they showed how all the candidates, they broke the candidates down uh -huh. and color-coded. Uh -huh. And all, the, all over Austin, everywhere, were orange colors for... Kathy Tovo, uh -huh. and she, where they hit, where she got over fifty percent of of those precincts. Can I guess? Actually, it was it was. Go ahead, guess. West Austin and Northwest Austin. No, Tovo. Oh, you mean for shade? For shade. Yeah, it was far west actually. Far west. Because Tovo took cent Center City, uh -huh. North and South mm -hmm. Center, uh, the East Side. And she went into the west side. Mm -hmm. You can see a large chunk on the west mm -hmm. side. And uh, Shade didn't get 50% in many precincts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it why I think we need these, like. these single-member districts. We've found that there's like a five-precinct core in West Austin that votes like – they decide, you know, 75% of the votes come from there over and over and over. They participate every time. And then I think a lot of public employees are the ones that go out and vote as well, especially in 
public employees tend to vote for those that are going to further the status quo and ensure that they continue a job, and sometimes that means more taxes for the rest of us. And I know the activists in the Democratic Party, and I would assume so, uh, activists in all parties yeah, put it right are probably the ones that get out and vote. Yeah. Sure. You know, it leaves a lot of people that don't. I'm all for, I'm not for Mayor Leffingwell's, what, 621? Me neither. I, I'd rather have like an 821 or an 841 to where the districts are smaller. Uh, are we ready? And whether it's, whether it's, um, uh, it's going to be demographic, I mean, not demographic, geographic, mm -hmm. you know, however that falls out. And I know that some folks are saying that, that uh, you know, we have to have districts so that African Americans and Hispanics, you know, mm -hmm. have a district or have districts. However you break it down in Austin, you're going to have Hispanic districts, mm -hmm. especially in the, in the east, the southeast east side. East, the southeast. Uh, African American is going to be a little bit tougher, a little bit tighter, because there's, there's no major block anywhere except where I live. Uh, which is on this side of town. Well, let's see if this guy wants to tell us here on the telephone, I think. Go ahead. Hey, fellas. Woo. You got some feedback going on there. Yeah, it's top down feedback. Yeah, I just spotted Randy Shade at the Hawk route. <laughs> she was uh, drowning her sorrows in a two-pound steak. <laughs> Hold the potatoes and the salad, I think. Hold on here. Now, let's God. not get, get to... Uh... <laughs> oh, did you see that ad, her ad? Uh -uh. She ran an ad where she's sitting in... She's at Hofbrau Steakhouse, and she's sitting in front of a big steak and potatoes and a Shiner Bach, and she's sitting there looking all grand uh, the, the, to be nice, and uh, it says, Randy Shade, this is how Randy takes care of the meat and potatoes. Right. So you would think it was, it was like a spoof. Like a Shady the Clown sign he spoofing did. her. Uh, who, who, it was her, who put this up there? Her campaign. Her campaign. <laughs> you got to see it. It's anyway, this is Nate. Good show, guys. Hey, Nate. Yeah. That's Brisket Master. Yeah. Talk to you later. Thank you, later. sir. Oh, yeah. She loves her steak and potatoes. I didn't see that. Yeah, it's funny. It's, yeah, it's pretty yeah, I've never <laughs> seen anything bad? by any candidate like that. <laughs> It like, deserves to be spoofed. What is she saying here? You know, it's just, yeah, yeah what, sure. if, what was the point of it? She's, it's supposed to be her big campaign She'll take thing. care of the meat and potatoes. I should clean yep. that shit up. I mean, uh, <laughs> take care of the basics, I think. That's, is what. Yeah, the basic services, the public employees, fire, police. Well, I'm hoping that, that if she runs, they, they call me up and they come on here. Because yeah. uh, we'll try to take it easy on her. I know both y'all don't seem to like her much at all. <laughs> I, all right, let's, let's see here if there's somebody else. Right. Let's say I'm more a fan of Tovo than uh, I'm than yeah. than I'm not a fan of Shade. I'm definitely not a I fan. Did, of I didn't even see what the uh, what the turnout was. It was like seven percent, something really uh, really a little pathetic. over seven. They said it just just missed two thousand, I guess, which is the the smallest turnout that oh, there's wow. been of seven percent. This was a tad over that. That's a shame. And that's another thing that single member districts ought to help with because mm -hmm. if you've Think got so? somebody, yeah, especially if you yeah. have more districts than fewer. Because one, a candidate's going to be able to get around to each of the each of the homes. Uh -huh. They're going to be able to introduce themselves individually. It's not going to cost them an arm and a leg to campaign, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a very personal kind of campaign because these are the people you're going to be representing, mm -hmm. and the people are going to have the opportunity to get you out and and know that they can come to you with their issues and not somebody that lives on the west side. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Or, yeah, that's or wherever. Yeah, you wouldn't have to campaign all over town. No, mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot less expensive uh, for the for the uh, campaigners, for the candidates. I never see anybody over there on Crack Street where I live. Hmm. I don't know that I've seen anybody where I live, but I live off the alley. So it's, <laughs> yeah, you live in a darker type of neighborhood too. I live I live on East Ninth Street. I think a lot of the on Crack Street, there's not people voting, and one of the sad parts is it's a lot of the <laughs> lower uh, socioeconomic status families that are getting harmed the most by the current status quo policy, uh, like them right subsidizing all this growth and gentrification of East Side. They're driving these poor communities and, and families outside of Austin altogether, right and that's the big uh, shelling out money. Duh Springs, where I'm at. There you go. Well, so see, those I, are the people I, that need to be voting. See, I've been accused of being a gentrifier. Oh, yeah. Because I moved in four years he, ago. He's got a pretty mm -hmm. nice place. Uh, Small, but nice. It was new. 
is what what makes it you know fairly decent. It was two houses on one lot, yeah. and uh, it, yeah. they were built in 2003. Uh, Did and you get public money to move in? No, that's no. What and the I don't see I and is. I don't see that happening with most of the people. I mean, it is changing. It's mm -hmm. it's changing drastically, mm -hmm. and uh, I see young families moving in mm -hmm. quite a, quite a few of them with kids because mm -hmm. now we see them on the strollers. And my neighborhood was a very and still is. It's it's elderly. It's African American in large part, and it's poor. Mm -hmm. You know, so there are some people being driven out because of taxes. Mm -hmm. I don't see them being driven out by the people that want to move in there, and I see more people moving in than I see speculators buying the property and then either reselling it or renting it. Sure, and I, I think on the smaller scale, and I'm a free market guy, so if someone yeah, naturally wants been. to move to a side of town and there's a home Literally there, they want to build a, a larger McMansion, then by all means, but whenever you have unnatural incentivization, which we do see happening a lot through the comprehensive planning, they're starting to push these town centers and smart mm -hmm. growth developments, like the Mueller development, for example, was publicly incentivized, and that is an example of rising property taxes because they have these fancy pants, uh, you know, uh, retail components, and now there's a big hospital there. And then they're, they're incentivizing around the Plaza Saltillo area to drive a bunch of these condos and larger establishments. And I think that it is damaging, and it is increasing the property rates. But well, they, I don't have a problem if it happens naturally, but whenever you right. have a city central planner that's saying this is where growth ought to occur regardless of the uh, results of that, no matter you know who, who could be harming, I think that's a problem. Well, maybe if the, if, if, if the city and the state really want to spend some money, maybe should, they should take some of these incentives that they, they, they've paid to the domain to retail stores of all things. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I can in, understand Put it that. in education. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the future. You know, and and if you talk about closing schools, talk about increasing class sizes, uh, laying off teachers and and others, and and uh, in the education system, the only people going to suffer are the students, and eventually the the city and the state are going to suffer because the people aren't going to have the kind of education that they that they should have. Texas is also really already very low, forty uh, seventh yeah. or something on the on the amount of money spent on each student. <laughs> and and they're you know it's 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 sad. It's a boondoggle. It's sad. Well, it I don't is. really have a problem with that. What are we getting for our money? Sometimes not it's much. not. How do we rank on on the edge on the dropout rate and stuff like that with other states who are spending more? Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of, of we rank high of, on dropout rate. Yeah, I think there's an institutional problem. I'm a fan of the voucher programs and private schools. And I don't think that individuals should be forced to pay for their neighbor's child's education. I think that's coercive. And uh, I don't own a home in Austin, but if I did, I wouldn't want my, all my property tax to go for services that I don't use. I think if we were to allow more community schools, uh, homeschooling, hey, homeschooling cooperatives. Why don't we do it like Mexico? You pay till sixth grade, and after that, they got own. a lot of uh, trade schools in Mexico. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good route too. Teach a child to trade. Uh, they may not necessarily be interested. Not everybody has to go to college. sixth grade, and after that, not everybody has to go to college. Not everybody's going to want to go to college. And we do need mechanics, and we need uh, HVAC folks, and we need a lot of different trade tradesmen. We do. <sighs> that's but really I have to say, in. I have to say that if you no, and Texas. and I take it you're a libertarian. John. I'm a libertarian. Okay. Free market so, radical. So. We're going to disagree uh, as far oh, as taxes, uh, because to me, you can you if you can say, well, it's public school, and but I don't have any kids, or in my case, they're grown. Mm -hmm. uh, I shouldn't pay taxes to help my neighbor's kids get through school, mm -hmm. uh, but their the neighbor's kids getting through school and getting a good education might have something to do with my. Uh, quality of life down the road as as intelligent people get e either into positions of government or, or business. I mean, I, I think our public school system is shelling out uh, not very productive people, and I don't think those are people that should go into government. But my whole idea is if you think that we ought to fund other people's, other families' education, then uh, if you weren't being taxed, I would recommend that you privately donated to some sort of school or a private school or a homeschooling cooperative. And the reason why I appreciate Austin so much is because there are people out there that are concerned for the education of lower income families that may not be able to buy their own education if we were to have a total free market education system. Uh, that's why I would encourage them to go ahead and donate a portion of their income to helping out the needy who may not be able to afford a particular education uh, 
uh, not, business or firm. But we see what happens with, with charity in general, that people that uh, need the charity can't always get what they need because either people are tight, mm -hmm. uh, either because they're naturally that way, they just don't spend the money, mm -hmm. or because times get tight. And if times are tight, you obviously, in my humble opinion, mm -hmm. that's one of the things the government's for, is to help those that can't help themselves, especially in the times when they need it. And so when char charities don't well, get as how much... how far are we going to go with this? Uh, I got an email today about these people out buying lobster on a Lone Star card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that probably tends to happen. So, I mean, my position How do I get one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think taxation, when it's uh, non-consensual, is theft. So if that's the position you advocate, are you willing to take it far enough to where a tax man or a law enforcement official uh, would have to put a gun to someone's head to coercively extract that money if they had a moral problem with what the public education is teaching, for example? No, I but if I have a moral problem with uh, money being spent in Iraq or Afghanistan, mm. uh, I, have no, I have no recourse. If I'm working for somebody else, mm they're going to take taxes out. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm paying it anyway. Mm -hmm. okay? And I have no problem paying taxes. I, mm -hmm. I think that, that there are a number of things the government should do, and therefore taxes should be taken out by all from everyone's income uh, to help pay for those things that government is supposed to do. It's yeah, we want to have paved streets. Yeah. And, uh, highways, What cops, about the roads? Highways, cops, firemen, uh, teachers. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that uh, government pays for that, that I think we would all agree are necessary things that charity isn't going to cover. Do you think that those services would necessarily not exist in the absence of government? For example, in the absence of a municipal police department, would it not be that there could be community watch programs or there could be private defense services be. on the market? There used to be. Years until and a monopoly ago, came and shoved it out. Well, until cities started to grow and they saw that having two or three or four different fire departments, all of them volunteer and all of them having different kinds of equipment because they had different levels that they could spend on the equipment, mm -hmm. they said, hey, we need a fire department for this town mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's responsible to everyone. Mm -hmm. instead of instead of local uh, 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 well, militias, if, if you will, in the, in the case it, of... Constitutional. Be, I'll, I'll stick up for this time because that could be up to the community because, as I say, I like the business thing, and part of what we sell here in Austin is a professional fire police EMS mm -hmm. and makes us look attractive to Samsung to come build uh, Project 3 here. You got two, one and two already, mm -hmm. so you might as well come on with three. More incentives. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, but the sad thing we see with the police, uh, it's easier to make that case against police because of their history than, than firefighters who primarily help people uh, when they call for help. Uh, but with the police, the, the lower income families are precisely the population that gets harmed the most, it seems, from police brutality and police abuse. I can't argue against that at all. And I think. Well, I got to stick up with the cops again. <laughs> I'm not, I have nothing against police. I understand. I understand what you're saying. But, but more, uh, more a lot of these, 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 these uh, minorities, low-income people, when you go out there and act like a fool, you're going to want to meet a cop you're going to get treated like one. Uh, the I cop's mean, not the executioner and the judge no, and the jury. No, but he's the one that gets called when uh, some kid's out there running wild in the street. Now, he's got to deal with it because he got called. Yeah. There's and if he doesn't, then, uh, but the, you're right, too, and it. It used to be you call your neighbors and uh, uh, more guns, less crime. You there you go. Book? Yeah, more and guns, less crime. What's the number crime. one crime fighter out there? A black woman with a shotgun. Oh, there you go. There you She'll go. She'll clear that street. Sure. And, and, uh, but to, but to get the Democrat trial lawyers. Uh, well, otherwise, the cops to clean up the mess, give her some more shotgun shells, and be gone. Sure. We'd have no problem at all. Yeah. I guarantee you there's Republican trial lawyers. <laughs> uh, I guarantee you not near yeah. the numbers. I, gu I guarantee you there's Republican. There we got are a some lot of Republican type trial lawyers. Yeah. Yeah. We have how many? How many attorneys? How many attorneys make up the Texas House? Uh -huh. the Texas Senate. And, and how, how many, many of those are? Council? How many of those are? are I don't to know the how to right. find out, but I'd like to. You yeah. got to come back on a show. I'll we will find see out. I'll find that out. Because I, would, I know the vast majority of trial lawyers are Democrats. Mm. And we got a few, not very many. All our lawyers are like uh, uh, title lawyers. And what would you do without trial lawyers? Trial I, lawyers? I, yeah, get rid of all lawyers except for mine. <laughs> Simple stuff, you know. <laughs>
I understand mm-hmm. trial lawyers think that they're, they're saving the world or something, but, you know, I got sued 150 bucks because I dripped a few drops of oil out of my truck in somebody's driveway. Oh, boy. I say, what did you expect? I'm in a dump truck. <laughs> you know, you have to come bring your stuff way up that driveway. Well, okay, uh, you sign, and okay, and I'll do it. And next thing you know. Uh, uh, I was supposed to be watching him, huh? It goes over <laughs> the phone's real bad again. Uh, no, I don't mind. I quit Slap on the table. wrist. No, 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 no. I, quit I go table. like this. One hand here, <laughs> the other hand here. Now, if you want any phone calls, repeat the number. Well, we can't put the number up. Do we have a CG? 472-2255. It's either you or the phone number. What well, do you want? Oh, Nate already knows the phone number. No one he called. Uh, what? <laughs> 472-2255. What do you think about individual firearm ownership? I have... I don't have anything against individual firearm ownership. I have some problem with, say, being able to buy a gun a week. I wonder how, what are you going to, what is any individual going to do with all those guns? Um, I have a problem with gun loopholes in gun shows to where. um, What's a gun loophole in a gun show? Loopholes in the gun shows. Define loophole. Uh, I have a problem with people on the no-fly list being able to buy weapons and the NRA fighting for that. Uh, you know, those those minor little things like Chris, that. Chris, remind me to send another $2 to the NRA. <laughs> well, the, the no-fly list. Like it, I think it's a good organization for what it, it started off to do. And, and I think that, that people that own guns ought to be trained and that the NRA is a good organization to help with that. But... Some of the politics of them, their their adamant opposition to any kind of regulation, I think, is incorrect. I don't think they go far enough in some instances, personally. I'm a big individual firearms ownership guy. Uh, but the no-fly list, I mean, people are put on the no-fly list For willy-nilly without any court order or any prosecution. I ain't paying this damn traffic ticket. You're on the no-fly uh-huh. list. There's even children on the no-fly list. Uh, I, I don't think that should be a good uh, a good indicator of who should own a firearm or not. No, but there have no, – I can't. I shouldn't say this, but I will. <laughs> well, the only reason I shouldn't is because I can't cite a case. Mm-hmm. But I know that I've read where, where those – where those suspected of, of uh, terrorist links – are on, who are on the no-fly list have been able to buy weapons. So there's got to be some, There, it should be logical. Obviously, have a kid being on the no-fly list is absolutely ridiculous. A grandmother being, you know, so it should be logical how they put, how you get on there. But if you're on there and it is logical, it's illogical that these people ought to be able to buy weapons. I'll have to stick with uh, John on this one. There used to be, you could... You could come out of the state prison in Huntsville, walk across the street, and buy a gun. Huh. You used to be able to order them out of a magazine, and they'd mail it direct to your house. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the police weren't allowed to carry guns when they first had police. It wasn't until the 30s, and then they, if you look at the old movies, when they had guns, they had to keep them concealed. Because oh, yeah. mm. the citizens wouldn't put up with this. Sure. And the, the, Brit- and the, the British constable. didn't carry guns for a long time. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Until recently. Uh, that's, 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 uh, yeah. that's one of my favorite examples is England. A hundred years ago today, uh, every man, woman, and child could have either have a gun or easy access to one. Mm-hmm. And England was at the, the top of the pinnacle of the world in any any science, medical, uh, geographic, uh, industrial. Banking. They led the world in everything. Mm-hmm. Everything. Every single field there was, England led the world, and, and everybody had a gun. Today, nobody's got a gun, and you can't find the English flag. Well, yeah. you can't find the English flag because they bankrupted themselves by trying to be the policemen of the world. Uh, no, I, I think it's in there. <laughs> yes, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. I yeah. think yeah. there's more to it than that. I, I think, think they went to socialism part. and uh, a lot of it they stretched happened. themselves too thin. One thing yeah. uh, uh, on the firearms ownership, there's a strong historical precedent of ruling regimes before they institute hardcore tyranny, like rounding people up and putting them in camps, for example. Uh, not just in Nazi Germany, they generally go through and, and, and do a lot of firearms control and firearms confiscation. And, and we but can't forget that the original purpose of individual firearm ownership, which is embodied in the Second Amendment, was to protect the citizens from tyrannical government. But nobody's guns are being taken away. We're talking about, uh, in my mind, there could, there could be a difference in, that. in, in what, what, uh, what I've read, 
472-2255. And, and hurry up because I want to ask. We were talking about Fast and Furious, and I know you got an opinion on that. Go ahead. F1. Fast and Furious operation. Are you talking about the F1 formula? Right? No, the F, the a ATF. Oh, Project operation Gunwalker. Walker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the ATF. What do you uh, think is, is the real reason behind that? I think there's too many instances where federal agencies are doing the exact opposite of what their task is. Like the FBI in 1993 giving a live bomb to the guy that blew up the World Trade Center bomb, uh, World Trade Center bombing. Uh, or the ATF who's supposed to be keeping guns out of uh, the United States and they're running in guns and automatic weapons into drug cartels. I think the purpose might have been to create destabilization so they can further uh, implement controls. Now we see southbound checkpoints coming through the state legislature. Now we see them being able to prosecute you for giving money to individuals who may or may not be associated with drug cartels. Uh, we see further destabilization in Mexico and their regime is starting to tighten the grip on the citizens. You know, I'm real familiar with that because we, we used to go to Mexico quite often. Yeah, not very often uh, anymore. I think yeah. it's a fraud. ATF is a fraud. Oh, right. What? Get rid of feedback now. All right, go ahead. Hello? Yeah, hello. The thing is, your, your feedback is I'm way over here. Oh, yeah? Hold on. Yeah, that's all right. Hey, I see you now. The next room. Hello? Yeah. Go ahead. That's TV on there, feedback. You need to turn off your TV. Turn off your TV. Your damn TV. Turn off your TV. Hello? Yeah, hello. It's it's off. He said to turn it off, Mom. We've been having lots of fun down here yeah, in the yeah. equipment. I think he's gone. No, we just put him on hold. Is he on his cell phone? Is the other thing? Master. Hello? There you go. Okay. That's yeah, good. I was just calling to congratulate Nancy Wilhite. She ran a school board election race in Del Valley. Yeah, let's see. And she won by one vote. Oh, <laughs> man. 40, 39 to 40. That was 39 to 40, and that was a real big effort by Richard Franklin, who sits on the school board right now. And he's turned that school board around from uh, his lone vote to uh, now there'll be four on the school board, and he'll only need one more to be able to take over the Del Valley School Board in a short two-year time frame. Is that a good thing? You think? <clears throat> That's a good thing. <clears throat> Remember the issue at Del Valley where they didn't want to allow them to have PTAs? Yeah, I didn't understand what that was. Okay, see, that's where all of this grew out of. And, and uh... No PTA at school? That's well, they, they weren't allowing P PTAs to be created at, in certain elementary schools huh. be, because they already had what they call a PPO. It's uh -huh. another form that's more controlled by the schools. And because of that, that issue, now they're realizing a turnaround on uh, school board members in Del Valley. And uh, what precinct did you work? This is Gavino. Hey, Gavino. Hey, Gavino. Hey. I work the, uh, I'm the, I'm the presiding judge at the Southeast uh, Collection uh, Substation at Travis High School. Oh, oh, okay. I wasn't an actual polling judge. I'm the judge at the, at the substation. Oh, so you were in the air condition and the inside all the time. Well, you know, they talk. <laughs> yeah, hey, Gavino, I was good seeing you down there. <laughs> and it is it's sad that you've only got a... Uh, uh, Del Valley, only uh, 40, 60, uh, 70 people voted at the whole place. Yeah, and just in that one race. But hey, that just goes to tell you the power of voting. It all it takes is one vote. Every vote counts. <laughs> yeah, they, they told me uh, you can be a judge, all you have to do is observe. Uh. Uh, but of course, there's a ton of work to do. So it never did work out that way. No, uh, no, uh, let me tell you, y'all y'all are the ones that do the major work because all we do is just go deliver all the stuff to y'all and say bye. <laughs> Good Lord, it starts piling up when everybody comes in and pumping up and pumping and driving all this stuff around and pay attention and uh, see what I'm supposed to do. Make sure the seals aren't broken uh, and make sure that the cards get, you know, everything gets handled properly. Yeah. Well, I hope Randy Shade does the right thing and stays home because that will save a lot of taxpayers' money. Well, you are just... Yeah, but I'm just looking at Shelly lost by uh, 
4,300 votes. All those other people are going to vote for Tovo, though, likely. Yeah, that's what I was just going to ask. It'd be a city right anyway. I appreciate you, man. Anything else? No, no, I, I just want to emphasize the fact that, you know, if she doesn't, you're going to have 209 polls open and probably have 10 or maybe 50 people show up at each poll. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, thank you for uh, taking my call and, and good luck and we'll be, we'll be talking to you all later. Well, I appreciate what you do yeah, because uh, I know that those people at the polls like you are are important. Yeah, you've been there a long time. I, yeah, I was there at Allen Elementary School. We had a great, a great turnout of twenty people <laughs> <laughs> in twelve hours. In twelve hours. Oh boy! But uh, again, you know, it's a democratic society, and and while we have every right to vote, we also can uh, exercise that right not to vote. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll let you all go, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. I just like to not hear so many people who don't vote gripe. Yeah, I, I always consider it your duty. Like we it were is. talking about the guns and things like that, you know. And I don't like early voting either. It's a responsibility. It's your duty. It's your responsibility. Yep. And it used to be. Uh oh, is this still going again or not? <laughs> no. <coughs> Hang up, proper. It's your. It used to be election day was election day. You always had a way you could vote early if you're going to be out of town. Yeah, you know, it's silly. I get it uh, on, on Facebook. Somebody somebody wrote there about how, uh, well, it's, it's I'm fed up with the city council. I'm fed up with the way it's run. And, you know, that's why people don't vote. Well, which is that's why the you're exact fed up with opposite of the reason, you know. You, you know, you vote so you can change exactly what, what you don't about. like. They're not going to vote because they're, why? I mean, they're all screwed up. <laughs> yeah, don't do anything to make Duh. a difference. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I would like to see the city council rendered insignificant and meaningless because the people get off their behinds and start taking care of themselves and each other without the need for government, which I think is coercive largely in a lot of their tax collection if you don't agree with it. I think we the people can band together and solve a lot of these problems ourselves Who for takes the most charge? part. Uh, you always got to have somebody leading the leading that whatever That was it is always my argument with the libertarian thing is like septic tanks. You have to have a. I would vote for a, a county commissioner that's going to require my neighbor to have certain standards for a septic tank. Yep. Why not? Just Why wait till it flows over and then have a, a class action lawsuit? I would it's try the same not thing to. When move. I, I want. I want somebody to pick up my garbage. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, that, there, I mean, again, uh, my neighbor would be out burning it like you know who up in Pakistan or something. It would be a fallacy to think that a private service wouldn't come through because obviously there's a demand for people to have their trash picking up. But there, I would hop in the entrepreneur There's got to be some that, that say I'm not going to pay, and you know. Well, then you don't get service, and you need to. And then you got the, the neighbor with yourself. sneaking garbage piled up while he waits to haul <laughs> it off in his pickup truck. You, you Ostracize him out of the community. Do or don't move into a neighborhood. Why not just vote for a city council right. that's going to make sure that... Well, look where that's gotten us. Where? <laughs> the status well, quo is absolutely terrible. turnout. The status quo is terrible. I bet you could get a 50% turnout and we would still be electing jerks to city council. And to the presidency, and to the United States Senate, Congress, state well, rep. Well, I'd still be getting my garbage it, picked up. It, it all goes, it seems <laughs> not when all, the dollar collapses. Seems to me it all goes back, though, to having up. a leader in whatever it is, whether it's an issue of garbage collection or it's an issue of, of a commander-in-chief over the armed forces or uh, a Congress, uh, a large group saying, here's what you need to do. If you didn't have those things, you're, and, and you've got a band of men somebody is either going to take charge or be elected to be in a position of power and to to set rules and to set regulations it, it's that's what a government is and it ought to be consensual Four, and they should have these eight, vast five, five. geographic monopolies where there's one government now we have the united states of america the federal government it used to be a bunch of competing states with competing state governments that catered to the different interests and ideologies and Until social constructs. Uh, well, yeah, the, the Articles of Confederation, <laughs> if you want to take it back even further. But, I mean, until the Civil War, when voluntary government was rendered 
uh, obsolete, and then even further after that, with the continual expansion of federal power over its constitutional bounds, it's now like we're living under just one jurisdiction, which is Washington, D.C. And as you further centralize power, it always leads to more problems, which I think even the city council government is centralized too much. Yeah, I'd like to see 16 <laughs> sim single member districts, the whole, just totally decentralize the whole thing to where the little guy could run for office, the little guy would have someone directly accountable to them to cater to the interests of those particular communities. But again, ultimately, I'd like to see us starting to take care of ourselves without well, having I, to rely on government to do it for us. I think, I think we are the government. I mean, I, that's how I was raised, and that's how I still consider it, that I can, uh, I can say no, whether or me. not somebody's going to be in office or not. You and, both got a point here. And if we're talking about 16, then what we're talking about is, is, is let's go from 6 to 16 and come up with a manageable number so that you don't have a, a cluster when you're, trying to, when you're trying to come up with a decision. The sure. more people, the harder the decision. We see that in Congress. The yeah. more accountability, That's too. Because every single member has their little precinct, their little district that, that they're going to listen to. They want to look after. Right. Right. So the more you have, the harder it decision. is. I think uh, to say that we are government, if you know, try to stop paying your income tax, and then I guess it would be suicide. If but you I don't, don't want do to stop paying. I see. We I do. I would I prefer understand. not to pay my income tax because a large portion of the money is used to murder people in the Middle East, and I have a moral objection to that. And if I were to choose not to pay my income tax, Get hell over there. I'm putting myself <laughs> at risk and my family at risk. You, they you, could come and take me to away. You are talking to a combat veteran. Oh, shit. Well, I appreciate your service for sure. But yeah, I, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, the wars right now are illegal and unjust. You expressed he opposition. He knows all about it. He probably agrees with it. I, I'm, I, I did earlier that, that, that I think that, that for, well, Afghan, I have to say that I'm not a pacifist. I wear a peace earring because I think peace is better than war. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not a pacifist. And at, after 9-11, I put a big eagle up that had its claws out, and, and I wanted to go into Afghanistan, okay? Talk it revenge or whatever you want, but I, I felt that we needed to do something. When we pulled resources right. out of Afghanistan to go into Iraq, and we spent a trillion dollars there and lost 4,000 or so men, not counting the ones that had come home maimed, that's just wrong to me. And so, yes, I oppose, as you do, Well, if we come up with nothing out necessary. of it, that's wrong, yeah. I opposed with Vietnam once I once uh -huh. I had been there and came home. Oh, sure, sure. But I volunteered. Ah, uh, you only know, joined them, them hippies because they had all the pretty girls. <laughs> well, know. yeah. You're free love, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you know. Uh, that was a pretty hippie right over there. there. The anti-war <laughs> anti crowd always had the pretty girls there. <laughs> I, uh, on that note, on the Afghanistan note, I happen to be... Way off the city stuff, but go ahead. I happen to be one of those crazy uh, kooks, and you'll appreciate this one. Uh, after 9-11, uh, I didn't go into the service. I spent the next four to five years in, in really uh, dedicated research, and I came to the conclusion that the attacks of September 11th uh, were carried out by criminal elements operating within our own government, likely intelligence agencies. And the biggest evidence of that is the collapse of World Trade Center Building 7, the third building that fell that day in six and a half seconds. That one's harder to explain. It's I hard to admit. explain. But if George Bush did all that to take over the world, he did a really shitty he job. He really did, yeah. It wasn't necessarily George Bush. They all, well, they just because it's a Republican, going to Demo they got the Patriot Act, the Military Commissions Act, the Department of Homeland Security, the Transportation Security Administration, four multiple wars of aggression, Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan unmanned aerial drones, and now the destabilization that was caused in that, we're now involved with Yemen. And uh, I think it was all based on a major lie, and, and a lot of people really need to look into that because we're still feeling the negative effects from 10 years ago to this day. And they're still passing draconian legislation and making us all afraid to where people are, are allowing hands to be put in their pants when they go before they get on an airplane. That's a job I need. <laughs> <laughs> all the hippie chicks can go. Yeah, I, I, I all it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, did you guys go to Eeyore's this year? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Talk about hippie chicks and go to Eeyore's? <laughs> I didn't go again this year. Oh, I, every year. Another nice. Austin original. I get, there you I, go. That's where I get all of my that's non- you get all your thrills? <laughs> Not all of them. Not all, it's just most of them. A lot. I you know, gotta go. Once a year, man. <laughs> if it's good enough it's, for him, it's, it's, it's awesome. where I get a lot of my art photo uh, photography got, done. Oh yeah, there's a lot you know, to shoot down instead there. Instead of political stuff, I get I get pictures of people having a good time. Yeah, you know, dressed all, all sort of. They tell me ways. I need to quit being so political, start out with too much fun. But when I do, my lady gets all mad at me. That's what my girlfriend tells me. Yeah, my lady gets all mad at me when I go have fun. <laughs> there you go.
fun out, baby. <laughs> we try to have fun while we're being political. Like, well, that's right. Shady the Clown signs and stuff like that. That's pretty fun. That was that pretty good. I uh, might have had something to do with it. <laughs> yeah. We actually have a big announcement that's going to be broken on Fox 7 tomorrow night. Uh, something that has to do with Randy Shade's campaign potentially breaking uh, some some state laws well, in regards to those signs. If they don't, if they, if she does back out and they don't contact me, then I'm going to have an open show on uh, June 13th. Because that's what I was planning. So cool. I'm sure they'll come, come. on your show, Kathy. Yeah, to Tobo should. If there's one thing, you know, regardless if you don't believe in the candidates' positions, they should at least present themselves to the community to have a well-reasoned discussion. These debates, the debates are great in Austin. There's always opportunity to go out there and meet the candidates. And man, Send they really some bust shout their out to my wife, Jamie. Hello, Jamie. You know, you can't call up uh, uh, Edgar four seven two 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 five five, and you ain't got a text message me, but you can if you want. You know that. See, Applebee's. That's Edgar from Applebee's. Nice. No, I, like I can have fun. I film lots of bands there. Just go to trailerparkshow.com. Uh, you go to music uh, with some big, big, some really good bands. Yeah. I like but Applebee's. But it gets late and I have a beer or two and my lady gets all mad. Like, uh, you know. Beer's yeah, cheap there. That. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, join me. Yeah. There ain't no way. Uh, anyway, hello, Jamie. Yeah, Edgar gets me in trouble. That's it. I'll blame him. I used to blame Jesse all the time, but that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Jesse? Yeah, my partner from uh, Duck Truck, oh. Outlaw Truck Driver time. Yeah. We're always, uh, you know, I, I used to work for him. He helped me buy a truck. Nice. And, uh, yeah, we have our, he's Hispanic and I'm white. They talk about, well, you used to mow my grass. Now I'm mowing yours. <laughs> That's funny. I got a rubber hose. Yeah, oh, we got off with city stuff, but we only got like five <laughs> minutes left. We ain't even got that. We got 58, five minutes. Uh, yeah, I need the city to pay my street, pick up my garbage, and uh, David's social net of some kind. <laughs> I can't go to work because nobody will pay the liability with my rubber hose up my nose. <laughs> I'm yeah. in my dump truck. The cops said, ain't no damn way, and, and I couldn't get insured, and... Because the Democrat trial lawyers will sue somebody <laughs> if I do something. <laughs> so now I'm stuck out here with a rubber hose up my nose, living on rubber Crack Street, and I want to get my garbage picked up. That sounds like a country western song. Yes, it really does. That'd be <laughs> yeah, a good one. Hey. Good. The rubber nose up my nose, yeah. rubber hose on Crack Street. And I got to get my garbage out. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I think we got to hit. <clears throat> well, I can add in about the, I want to flush my toilet. Uh, yeah, I'd sure. like to do that. I think that'll happen with the government or not. Toilets will flush. They have I to don't. Be I don't. I don't. I don't either. You don't think there would be a central? Uh, no. Nope. potentially the potential for different neighborhoods to cooperate together to organize. Some I'm sort gonna of find system. some way to cut it. And I'm just gonna run my pipe out in the street. When it rains, it's gonna wind up over on your yard. Then you all file suit against you. Why? Why not just hire that, a vote for a city councilman? It's gonna put certain standards that says no poking. And do the you work. got to you got to hook that thing up to uh, you know some kind of proper. I don't trust them to be able to help me and defend my life, liberty, and property. Well, all oh, I'm talking about is I want to be able to flush the toilet and <laughs> know that my neighbors are gonna, ain't going to wind up in my yard. <laughs> well, if someone harms your property, then you should be able Class to go to some lawsuit. sort of private There you go, trial lawyers again. Trial lawyers, yeah. 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 Not so bad this time. <laughs> Why not just right. vote for a trial lawyer, put him in office, and that way I don't worry about my neighbor flushing his toilet, and he ain't going to worry about me flushing mine. Minor little technicalities as as uh, we, we we our cities get bigger, and like Austin is, is just, we're talking density, which I think is a good idea, uh, personally. Uh, so uh, the denser you get, the more chance that if you got a fire in your neighbor's house, that it's going to spread to yours. And mm -hmm. I'd like to have somebody there that can get there fast enough. Uh, to fight that fire and that I don't have to pay them a hundred dollars yeah. or whatever at the time to do it because they're a private company. What if I'm broke I like I'm always now? Exactly. You know, so, oh, well, just watch your house burn. No. You, if I, no, if I, I were to... I'll take that my hose out and help, but I can't put your fire out with my little hose. I heard that that happened, and a bunch of, uh, you know, Democratic liberal types started saying, this is an example of why the free market won't work. I went back and did some research, and the reason why that 
fire department was not allowed to put the fire. It actually was a state-ran fire department. The fire was taking place outside of the jurisdiction, and the government would not allow them to go ahead and step outside of the jurisdiction because potentially there could be some problems with that. They're going to sue you. Okay. Yeah, there you go. There you go. What if they don't put our fire out right? They can it sounds like it sounds like you're it sounds like you're a show for the trial lawyers because if, if there is no government, no rules and regulations, we're going to be suing everybody for oh. everything. Well, well think, still I, we're down to I want my lawyers. fire put out. I want to flush my toilet. I want to be free, and I want to avoid. I want that. to be free of my neighbor's toilet being flushed into my yard. <laughs> sure. Because you know, I like it's not much of a yard, but it's. It's a lot better without the poo in it's it. It's a lot yeah. better without my neighbor yeah. poo in it. And I know uh -huh. he, he really prefer if mine didn't go in his yard either. Yep. And so that's why we have a city government, because he, he, he likes this density thing. You know how much poo's coming out of one of them tall buildings downtown? Well, lots of Man, poo. what happens if they break? The Estonian. And in, and in your freedom thing, how would you do that? And that's high high price too. I mean, you guys well, are expressing tall. a demand. There's a demand for you got to pay for it when you move in. To There's a demand to keep peace between neighbors. I think these demands would be fulfilled by either the community voluntary help voluntarily helping each other out, or on the free market, a business would arise because there's a demand for an individual to profit and better his life by trading services what? and goods. Stuff, maybe no, you stuff for another show because <laughs> we'll go we'll go beyond the we'll go beyond beyond the city we'll go beyond we'll go beyond the city and talk about roads that uh, it it uh, for all the free market and all the money that was in this country I, I want to drive my roads were roads road. were built because governments especially yeah. the especially the interstate now we're going back. Because the government put the money out, said we want this done, and it was the free market companies who bid on the jobs and actually built the roads. That's true. And but helped out no, the but no individual company was you going to build all to that road. I mean, I think if there I was like a desire for it, it would happen. Trucks. Yeah, yeah, for sure, and it's benefits. And there's a, there's a demand for it. And the original days, a lot of it was with the railroads, especially. It was them helping out their big industry tycoonish goons there was that. to expand. But a lot of the money that they're using, again, was extracted coercively from people against their will in some instances. Four seven two 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 five five. We're going to run out of time, so if you want to say something, you better say it quick. And yeah, Edgar, hello, Jamie. So you ain't got to uh, text much. Uh, uh, I, don't want, I don't want my booze going anywhere but down the day. <laughs> I'm still stuck on this booze stuff, ain't I? <laughs> There must be a lot of these. Too bad. Is there all that much in your life? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on in your life? Uh, well, uh, that's my favorite one to go against my libertarian friends. <laughs> uh, I like that one. You the know, food. I mean, a libertarian for I'm just going to run it out in the yard, and uh -huh. when it rains, it's going to wind up and, and then have a class action lawsuit. And, uh, Is that happening wait. right? So that's not happening right now because that's because of we have a form of government okay. that requires certain standards on septic tanks in the county. And certain certain plumbing standards when you build, mm. uh, whether it's a high rise or a single family home. Sure, they require a lot of standards, and sometimes they get broke. One of the standards is not to uh, murder young African American children on the east side, and that standard gets broken. Well, what a guy pull a gun at you, and he's jacking up people at the at the ATM machine. What do you expect? Oh, that was never linked to that specific individual. He was arrested for uh, uh, he had been arrested. He just got out of jail for jacking up people at the ATM machine. And there was no fingerprints on the gun, by the way. That later came out as well. Well, nonetheless, it ain't like this happening every day. No, it's actually happening less in Austin than other communities, which is something to be thankful for, for sure. I've but lived, it shouldn't I've happen at all. Lot of, I've they lived never in a talk lot of about places, it was, all yeah. major cities, Detroit, Atlanta, oh, wow. Washington, D.C. Uh oh we're running out of time. Austin is definitely the best place I've lived for cops oh, there's, and there's a lot there's of There's my lady waving sure, sure, by on sure, the screen, Great way of life. Uh, it, oh, what do we got to tell, 30? Uh, yeah, folks, uh, next week will be uh, the game show. After that, I'm trying to put the music Sorry. together for the sixth. Uh, I'm hoping y'all will be back with us again. Love to. Someday. Always yeah. a pleasure. Because I got stuff going on. There's lots going on to chat about. I'm glad you finally talked me into it. I am, too. I told you. Well, it's not like the sixth thing, but you know what you do? <laughs> There's no reason to be nervous. Yeah. Anyway, uh, oh, we're off. It goes off at 5830. I didn't even know it.